Welcome to our story. If you're just now joining us, we've been exploring Arizona and Utah these past few weeks in a Voyager Sleep Inside trailer, which we've borrowed from Artie and Stacy of Expedition Trailers in Salt Lake City. We continue to put it through its paces on our rigorous test drive to see if it's going to be a good fit for our family's travel style and comfort goals. So ride along as we continue to mull over this trailer and finally come to a decision about our future exploration platform. Good morning. Hi. Why do you like sleeping inside? Like, Yo, this baby right here is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go. We look real overlander now. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Good. Yeah? I get a smile. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, it's some drool just for you. This is just <laughs> spit it out. <laughs> I'll go back the other way. There you go. He's free. Love some orange juice in the morning. <laughs> Wakes up your mouth. Not used to being on that side of the camera, huh? You know, we've got a new camera, and thank you, Panasonic, for finally going to phase detect autofocus because in the past I shot everything manual. Everything. Manual focus, manual exposure, manual ISO. And so when I would hand the camera to Sarah, it'd be like. And then obviously it wouldn't be usable. Usable. So now it's game changer. And now she can go to work. But I've been working this whole time. <laughs> That's right. But I do help with the baby. so You do. We can trade off now. You get a variety of things to try. Great. Right. I can wear lots of hats. Lots of hats. Okay. Deal. So how was it sleeping inside? Like really? What do you think? Amazing. No? Yeah. And getting up to nurse her, I didn't freeze my butt off. Yeah. It was so nice. Now, if you're familiar with our travels, then you know that we have a long history with turtleback trailers. We actually bought our first unit in 2016 before our travels had even begun to appear on YouTube. In fact, it was with that first trailer that we developed, forged, and filmed the Lifestyle Overland Enchanted Rockies Trail. This 1,200 mile long route of mostly off pavement travel through New Mexico and Colorado was a huge hit and accidentally put us on the path to becoming full-time digital storytellers when it started getting lots of attention on YouTube where I had posted it just to share with family and friends back in Tennessee. Not long after, and because we were so very impressed with the brand, I actually shifted careers from the construction world and joined Turtleback Trailers as their operations manager, where myself and sometimes our whole family spent long days and weekends helping take the brand to the next level, with many of our ideas and lessons learned going into the 2018 design upgrades. With our YouTube channel growing by leaps and bounds and long hours taking toll on our family life, we decided to do something a bit crazy to try and find some sanity again. I have a seat. <laughs> That's so good. As of April 1st, we'll be leaving our current position as operations manager at Turtleback Trailers, selling our only home, which is a fifth wheel camper and truck, and then setting out as full time adventurers and travelers in our Forerunner and Turtleback trailer. So, what's the news, guys? We just sold the camper. We did what? 
sold the camper. We sold the camper. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I was getting a little worried, but it happened. Not me, I called it. She called it. A little bit of celebration and a lot of preparation fixing to happen up in here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And so, we sold nearly everything we owned and took to the road full time in our new orange trailer towed by our trusty steed, Silver. The goal, to travel from the Gulf Coast of Texas to the shores of the Arctic Ocean at Tuktoyaktuk in Canada, all while hopefully finding ourselves again along the way as we reconnected as a family through adventure. And so with a few months of travel funds in our pockets and a brand new camera at our side, we figured we would share our story in hopes of finding enough interest and support to keep traveling indefinitely. Worst case, I knew I could always return to my previous career if funds began to ran thin and simply chalk it all up to one big adventure. But as you may have guessed by now, the opposite happened. And thanks primarily to our supporters on Patreon, we've been sharing our experiences with our followers ever since as our full-time gig. Then, in 2021, we teamed up with the second owners of Turtleback, and while they wanted to see us in a new, updated expedition model with all the bells and whistles, we instead requested a trailer model we've been passionate about since its inception, the Getaway Utility Trailer. Our dream while we were working at Turtleback was to offer an affordable, entry-level trailer with enough space for a family's gear collection that could sit ready and waiting for any adventure while starting at an affordable price, all backed up by the then-legendary Turtleback quality and service. The concept was to start with a basic tub and then have shippable, modular drop-ins where family could upgrade the unit as they had funds for things like a kitchen, water system, and electrical components. But sadly, the modular system was never developed, and we were never able to complete that chapter of our turtleback story, though the format was still great for hauling kayaks, bikes, and an obscene amount of camping gear. Then, suddenly and unexpectedly, we learned that turtleback had halted production across the lineup, and rumors began to emerge that they were looking for yet another new owner to take over the brand. It was at that time that Sarah and I began to have some serious discussions about a shift to something different. There was indeed another trailer, that we've been drooling over since we first laid eyes on it a year before. And honestly, not since our first introduction to Turtleback way back in 2015, had we been so impressed with the trailer layout and build quality. But the real selling point was that this trailer had something a Turtleback never had, a solid sleep inside design. After many years of dreading the occasional extreme windstorms during our travels and the sleepless nights that usually ensued in a noisy tent, the thought of a secure, warm cabin for us, and especially for our new baby Abigail, sounded like a gift from the heavens. And I swear we could hear angels singing the first time we climbed inside. And so, with an unfortunate and uncertain turn of events for a brand that we had invested blood, sweat, and tears into for many years, we made the difficult decision that it was time to part ways with Turtleback and consider something new. The fact that it was built by a family much like ours, who had poured their souls into something they believed in, made it all the more appealing. All of this to say that it's no small decision for us to switch to something new. And if you've been following our journey over the years, then you know that we take our associations and our recommendations very seriously, especially when it comes to something as expensive as an Overland trailer. And so, our thorough shakedown and vetting process continues as we near our decision. One of our biggest considerations during this test drive was ensuring that this trailer is light, strong, and capable of taking the trails we enjoy most, which means it needs to take some punishment on long washboard roads and then be up to the task of traversing decent obstacles when the time comes. And while we don't usually seek out technical trails, we need a trailer that can take on that half mile stretch of nasty boulders smack dab in the middle of a beautiful 50 mile loop without having to turn back. And in this department, the Voyager has quickly impressed us with how deceptively light it is thanks to 98% of its frame and body being constructed of aluminum, with steel components being used at high stress areas like the tongue, suspension, and rear hitch. Since the frame and body aluminum portions are riveted like commercial aircraft, they can withstand a tremendous amount of stress without fatigue and cracking that welded aluminum trailers can exhibit over time. 
In its current trim, and loaded with 36 gallons of water, this unit weighs in at around 3,400 pounds, which means the GX hardly knows it's back there in most situations. We're also pretty impressed with the clearance, departure angle, and coil spring independent suspension featuring shocks and limit straps for one of the more stable trailer rides we've ever seen. It's one thing to throw fancy parts under a trailer, and another thing entirely to have each component tuned to the weight and use case. And while the stance is slightly wider than our previous trailers, which might be limiting in some extremely tight situations, the trade-off in stability and the almost queen-size bed width between the wheel wells, in our book, is an acceptable trade. After exploring more of the cinder hills and surrounding volcanoes, it was time to air up and head to our next area of operation. A few months back, I built my own four-tire air up kit out of polyline and pushing connectors from Amazon, and I'm happy to report that this is probably one of my favorite mods in recent history that makes airing up a breeze. It even has a cutoff valve between the front and rear tires so I can adjust their pressures independently. Oh, and this automatic tire inflation tool we've been testing makes the whole process a snap. If you'd like to copy this kit, then head to lso.link forward slash four tire for all the parts I found on Amazon to make it happen. I might even make a how-to video for this kit if enough people comment down below. Use that first one to start my loop the right size. Holding it level? Uh, sort of. Ish. Ish. I appreciate it though. And that's that. We're going to go look at a river. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, they're beautiful. Ready to go look at a river with me? Sure. Let's go look. Wow, look at that river. That thing is scooting. I'm not gonna lie, it smells amazing down here. Almost like bubble gum, right? Almost. Yeah. The trees have this like really sweet kind of bubblegum smell. It's delightful. Let's go touch the water and see how freezing cold it is. <laughs> Make sure there's no crocodiles. What? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Cold? Yes. Light. Frigid cold.
we've left the desert. We have. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what some elevation will get you. Let's see, I used the word elevation. I used to use altitude. And I was corrected by the internet. Even though the dictionary says they both mean the same thing, our aviation fans get a little upset. Anyhow, we're learning. This is a cool spot. Maybe a little bit of help. Maybe pines. Maybe. Not much. With things heating up in the lower elevations, we headed for the high ground and cooler temps. Oh, and speaking of cooler temps, another item that we've been loving is the built-in Truma furnace and water heater, which means Sarah could feed, dress, and change Abigail's diaper in a warm cabin instead of the chilly rooftop tent. And while we had good luck with the diesel heater we used last winter, the noxious fumes have begun to grow worse towards the end of the season. So, this quality unit is a welcome change. Add in the on-demand water heater, and even I was volunteering to do the dishes after supper, which made Mama Bear very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Once we settled into camp, Caroline and Abigail hung out in the toasty cabin while Sarah got supper started. If it's not obvious by now, this is probably our favorite part about this trailer. You can tell that Artie and Stacy spent a considerable amount of time planning this area out since the layout is nothing short of genius. The whole kitchen transforms into its galley form in just a few seconds, and there's no cumbersome hoses or water lines to hook up. Just click the propane safety switch, and you're cooking with gas. It's also totally accessible in its collapse configuration, so trailside lunch or snacks are at your fingertips without performing a Rubik's Cube evolution to get to the fridge or cabinet hidden behind something else. Just pop open the main door, and it's all right there. What's for dinner tonight? We're going kind of easy because it is super blustery windy, and I just want to eat for now like right now let's do it <laughs> so we're making uh crispy chicken sandwiches nice and potato salad Ooh, fancy. yeah all right let's do it my pleasure yeah <laughs> how's the uh, walmart special holding up i mean so far so good yeah. i'm not complaining they look fancy i know right probably need to put my shield up shields up captain corner Zip it up and place it. Boom. Since we're rolling two fridges deep. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I have a freezer. Yeah, right. We've got we frozen have... things. I've got steak, ice cream. I've got chicken in the freezer popsicles i mean we probably should have stayed down where it's hot we just need an ice maker now yeah. tyson's finest tyson's finest <laughs> yes mm. can't go wrong with some tyson so let's use this uh fancy kitchen to warm up some chicken patties <laughs> if it wasn't as windy i was gonna do like a nice nice dinner oh i know but yeah. you're my sunshine excuse me you are my sunshine <laughs> You're in my sunshine, my only sunshine. <laughs> what? Ooh. How's it going in here? Good. Yeah? Is she pretty happy? Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> As to customizable parts on this trailer, it can be outfitted with a number of different tents and awnings, shower tents, and even a square awning ensuite for total protection against the sometimes numerous bugs. This particular unit is equipped with 230 gear all the way around, and their Kabari wedge style tent up top makes for a quickly deployed sleeping option for a couple of adults or about three kids depending on how you stack them. Throw a few more kids in the optional ensuite and gear slings, and you could sleep a family of seven or more depending on their sizes and ages. After a bit, Abigail needed some special attention. So, Caroline volunteered to step in and whip up dinner for us. And while we definitely gravitate towards the more made from scratch meals, especially with a kitchen like this, sometimes you just need something easy when you have a baby in the mix. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good job. Do you want everything? Okay. 
Dad. Whoa! Altitude just took over. Of course, now the wind's dying down. Ready? 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 I got it. Oh, you got it. You don't have to press hard, just move it back and forth. Good sharp knife will do that for you. Good job. There you go. Oh, nicely done. That's beautiful. Sweet. Good job. You made that. There you go. Made back here. Copies. Copies. I made it. Did you make that? Yeah. Thanks, Caroline. It looks fantastic. Mmm. Yes, it does. It'll be even better later. Mm-hmm. That's how she talks in her head. Ooh, the cheese is like crispy on it. It like side. rolled all the way around <laughs> it. Nice. Ready? Ready. It was like the best crunch <laughs> when you eat. So good. So I did mine as a double decker. Even got the like Big Mac intermediate bun and some chips. Mm. So in case you can't tell, a little bit of a hot mess from time to time. Usually I had to be taking my time, getting some cinematic shots. This is definitely more run and gun, more vlog style. And it's simply because we got a lot of distraction with Abigail. Our rhythm is a little bit different and we're learning how to work through it all. So I hope you've enjoyed all these little <laughs> chaotic moments. Cause that's real, that's us. Like we're just in a new stage and we're figuring it out. But uh, this trailer is making it a lot easier. I can tell you that right now. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. How'd you sleep? Just in time. Just in time for the grind. That's right. What's your breakfast? Morning grind. Uh, pancakes. Yeah. yeah. And sausage. Nice. This might be the biggest pine tree I've seen in a very long time. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is huge. Every bit of like 42, 44 inch diameter, maybe more. We used to have big ones like that back in Tennessee, especially the white pines before the pine beetles just completely took them out. That's a monster. <laughs> you trying to hit me? No! 
Lately, we've been moving at a much slower travel pace to help keep these adventures enjoyable and achievable until Abigail is a bit more seasoned to the longer trail days. So in the meantime, we're finding fun ways to spend time in camp. And that means something as simple as a pile of pine cones can quickly turn into a game with a little bit of creativity. It might not seem like much to us adults, but these moments are when core memories are born for our kids. And so it's important to take the time to dive in when the opportunity arises. And with that little bit of extra time on our hands, Sarah and I took some time this morning to reflect back on our test drive of this trailer and go over our experience in great detail. We touched on all the features we've covered in this video, and while all these points might sound like a sales pitch, it's actually mostly directed at ourselves, and we're just sharing our thought process and how we've worked through the features of this trailer to come to a decision. The truth of the matter is, there's no perfect trailer, just like there's no perfect overland rig platform. Each comes with its strengths and weaknesses, which change for everyone depending on your travel style. Have four kids? A forerunner probably isn't for you. Prefer the hardest trails possible? Then a sleep inside trailer probably won't follow you there. Like us, you just have to find a balance between your needs, wants, travel goals, and obviously budget. And uh, speaking of budget, I know some folks get downright angry when they see the price tag on something like this trailer. But I can tell you, after having been the operations manager for Turtleback and developing multiple cost analysis reports, it simply costs a significant amount of money to build something up to the task of constant abuse that trails can throw at them. Add in the overhead of a facility, crew, insurance, research and development, machinery, tools, and you can see it really gets difficult to find a profit margin that makes all that effort worthwhile. A few missteps, and it doesn't take much to close the doors on an overland trailer business, as we've all seen firsthand by several named brands. That being said, we're very mindful about who we're willing to work with, and that's where the proven track record from Artie and Stacy really hits home, because, Expedition Trailers isn't their only business. You might know them better as the owners of Artec Industries, which has been around since 2003 and has been in the off-road and overland world since 2010 as a successful, reputable parts manufacturer, which obviously gives us the peace of mind we're looking for when representing and working with a brand. While the trailer side of things is their newest endeavor, when you look at this unit and realize it's one of their very first designs, it really hits home that these folks know what they're about, and that gets us excited for all the potential developments in the future. And so, with these facts in front of us, and after our extensive test drive, it probably comes as no surprise that the Lifestyle Overland family has decided that a Voyager Expedition trailer is the perfect fit for us as we move into the future and into a new chapter of adventure. We are beyond excited to announce that we will soon be exploring in our own Voyager, outfitted with some interesting ideas we've already begun to develop with our friends through our collective experience and enthusiasm. You're definitely going to want to hang around to see what's next. But until next time, remember, stay curious and leave it better than you found it. Thank you.